Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Monday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so much for joining us today. My Bible is open. It's open to the book of Ruth, chapter one. If at all possible, reach over, get your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, Ruth, chapter one. In a moment, I'll begin to read at verse eight. You might want to also get something on which you can jot some notes. I'll give a clear outline of the verses that we're going to be dealing with. Along the way, you expect me, I hope you do by now, expect me to talk about a gospel tract, and I've got one in front of me. It's entitled, Have You Found Rest? And it fits so well with our study today. That's why I selected it in particular, because, well, the word rest is going to show up in our reading today in the Word of God. Let me lead into the Bible study this way. Do you remember these words spoken by Jesus when he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest? Do you remember where those words are found? Well, just in case you don't, those words are found in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. They come at a point in Jesus' ministry when he's been apparently officially rejected by the Jews of his day, and they have officially said, no, you will not, we will not make you our Messiah. As a result of being rejected officially by the Jews, Jesus then makes an offer to anyone and everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, to find their rest in him. I begin to think you grasp the fact that Jesus was certainly not offering lazy boy chairs for the people's bodies. He he was offering rest for their souls. He was offering spiritual rest. As we continue our study today in the book of Ruth, we're going to see that Naomi, as she tries to find rest for her two daughters-in-law. Now, what Naomi seeks for them is a really good thing. But what we're going to eventually find out is that not all people are going to grasp where to find rest. Get your Bible open, Book of Ruth, Chapter 1, get something on which you can jot some notes. That gospel tract I mentioned ago, a moment ago, the title again is, Have You Found Rest? And before I go any farther, let me make sure we all know what a gospel tract is. A gospel tract is a short, written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's in a format that's easy to carry with you in your pocket, in your purse, ready to give out to somebody, even to those people that you cannot verbally communicate the gospel to. It's a great way to extend the gospel witness with people that receive it. They may not read it right away, but when they do read it, God's word will be found in the track and faith cometh by hearing. This particular track, Have You Found Rest, begins with those words that Jesus spoke about, come to me and find rest out of Matthew chapter 11. It talks about a man who was a Sunday school superintendent, a really religious guy, but he had no rest for his soul. He was seeking rest through religion and morality. This gospel track is gonna go on to say that the one who was saying, come Come to him to find rest is the judge of all mankind. It's the son of God who is making this offer. And the invitation to come is so simple. Anybody can come. Oh, by the way, this gospel track will say this. Suppose our Lord said, quit your drinking, your drugs, your filthy habits, and I'll save you. What about the poor wretch enslaved by booze who has already tried a thousand times to quit and can't? What the point being made here is that Jesus does not say don't. Jesus does not say don't. He says come. Christ will help us deal with sin habits once we come. Oh, friend, if you need to be saved from sin, come to Jesus. That's what this clear gospel track 
will say. Won't you let me send it to you, please? At the end of the program, my announcer will give to you some ways by which you can contact us and give us your name and address. Do that, and we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our gospel tracks, including this one, Have You Found Rest? You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, and you can order that free sample packet there as well. Ruth chapter 1, beginning at verse 8, here's what the Bible says. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go, return to your mother's house, and the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of their husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Just stop with our reading right there, if you would. Now, my title for the study here through Ruth is this, Faith Finds Rest in Ruin. Faith finds rest in ruin. A family is in ruin in the opening five verses here of the book of Ruth. Why? Because of sin. The wages of sin is always death. You know that. Now, in the second paragraph, which is verses 6 through 18, we're beginning to see faith emerge. Naomi, who is the backslidden believer here, is going to repent and go back to God. Ruth, who is an unsaved Moabitess, she's going to confess Jehovah to be her God and is going to place her faith in him. In verse 9 here of the first chapter, Naomi is headed home to Bethlehem after 10 years of being in sin and out of the will of God. And initially, her two daughters-in-law start the journey with her. But Naomi, somewhere along the line, probably quite early in the journey, Naomi tells the two girls to go home, go back home. Why? Naomi wants them to have rest. Now, that's a key word. Naomi wants her two daughters-in-law to find a place where they can be at ease emotionally and financially. The Hebrew word rest here means exactly that, to experience rest as it is used here, meant that after going through the hardships of the deaths of their husbands and the death of hope for any future stability with this lady Naomi, to find rest meant that the gals would find a place where their lives could be at ease. They would be at ease in that they would have a roof over their heads, a food on the table, and a family unit around them in their old age. And in that time and culture, this meant the girls would go find new husbands. My outline for verses 8, 9, and 10 has three parts, each one a key word beginning with the letter D. Here we go. Number one, first of all, the desire for the girls, the desire for these girls. Naomi wanted these two gals to have rest and ease in their future. They had been faithful and kind and caring to her after Naomi's own husband had died. Well, that brings me to point number two, the deeds of the children. Number one, the desire for the girls, now the deeds of these two girls. In verse eight, Naomi says, the Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. Now here the word dead refers to the deceased husband's. Dealing correctly with widows in that culture and in ours, by the way, is very important to God, so much so that God gives the New Testament church clear teaching on how to help widows and which widows we are to help. That's given over in 1 Timothy chapter 5. So far, we've had the desire for the girls, the deeds of the girls, and now the devotion of these girls. In verse 9, after Naomi releases the girls to go back to their Moabite families, she kisses them. Well, they then lift up their voices, and they begin to openly weep. Now, what we're seeing here is not fake. It's not just cultural expression here. What we're seeing is genuine love. The two girls, Orpah and Ruth, had grown to deeply love Naomi. Somewhere, somehow, evidently, Naomi had had a huge impact on their lives. She had become, well, in essence, more valuable to them than apparently their own mothers. 
The girls in verse 10 say that they will go with Naomi wherever she goes. They will leave their land of Moab. They're going to go to Bethlehem and be viewed there as outcasts because they're Moabitess, of course. They're going to be seen by the Jews as outcasts, but they're going to do this because they're going to love Naomi. Their love for Naomi overshadows and opens up their willingness to endure shame. That's what they're saying here. I just got to stop and say, why am I going through all of this? I began by quoting Matthew 28. Jesus said, come to him, he will find rest. Remember, Jesus was offering spiritual rest. We have here in Ruth chapter 1 an earthly picture of a heavenly truth. Everything that the word rest meant here in Ruth chapter 1, from an earthly standpoint, Jesus desires to give everyone from a spiritual standpoint. Jesus offers rest from eternal damnation and being an eternal outcast from God. Jesus offers the rest of knowing that your life is at peace with God through him, not through your own efforts. Oh, friend, so many people are trying to earn eternal rest and salvation by doing and doing and doing. They're doing works that they feel will earn them brownie points with God. They practice all manner of religious ceremony, trying to earn favor with God. Jesus comes and simply says, come to me, he says. I will give you rest. Not you won't earn it. He's saying, I will give it to you. Jesus did the work that brings peace with God, that takes away all condemnation, that takes away damnation off our soul, that takes the sin record away. It eradicates it through the shed blood of Christ. Titus chapter 3 puts it this way, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, his mercy, he saves us. Oh, God does not dangle us over a pit of fire until we have, we've been scorched long enough that he can say, okay, now I can allow you into my heaven. No, no, no. While we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us. In his grace and mercy, God went a hundred percent to deal with our sin issue and offer us rest for our soul. Now, when we get to Wednesday's broadcast, we're going to begin, just begin, we're going to begin to see how to find rest in Naomi's day meant that the girls were going to have to abandon their old God for a new God. One daughter-in-law will not abandon her old God, even though she has feelings for Naomi. How so much like she is people today. They really have emotional attachment to Jesus, but they won't abandon their old source of rest. So they can come to a place of solely relying upon Jesus to be their savior. They want to mix Jesus and their efforts, and it doesn't work that way. You've got to come to Christ alone to be saved from your sin. Only he can give rest to your soul, remove the guiltiness from your soul. Receive him, my friend. Receive him right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.